Right now in the UK, we're without doubt facing one of the greatest financial tests that we've seen in recent years, but also tests on our morale and also why we're going to get through with the right mindset. Today's video, I want to give you the best advice I can about what to do with your money right now. Not that we can just survive, but what can we do to actually thrive in this circumstance? Before we talk about money, let's get some ground rules here. I am without doubt passionate that you look after your health and your well-being and your family and loved ones before anything else. Wash your hands, take good common sense with everything you do. Focus on actually looking after your mind and your body. Money is of course important in society, it's how we function, but look after your actual health, especially at this time. We're going to get through it and we're going to do it together. So the first piece of advice I can give you to do with your money right now is, I know a lot of people might be in the camp that actually they're worried about their future, their incomes, and what that actually might bring. The first thing I would say you need to do, and this is regardless of whether you're safe in your job right now, you can work from home, or if you think your job is at risk, we need to get down to that bare bones budget. Now I know budgeting is not a sexy term, I'm not ashamed to use it, but it's the only way of actually knowing how much you need to function. The main things in your life, especially especially right now, we've dealt with our health, we're doing as well as we can looking after our bodies, but you've got to know how much money is critical for you to keep the four walls around you and food on your table. If we're in self-isolation or you're having to restrict what you actually do, there's not much entertainment budget really required. You might not need all those expenses such as getting your transport card, petrol, we can cut back of those just for the short term. But actually look at your budget right now. How much income are you getting? How much do you predict you will get in for the next short term? And what do you actually need to function? How much is your mortgage, your rent, those utility bills that you absolutely have to pay? On the debts that you still have to make a commitment on, not all of them are excused at this point in time, but what is the minimum amount that you need to pay? And you need to get that down in an electronic form or paper form so that you have have those numbers. What is the number that allows you to function and still be safe and dry? Now, if you haven't thought about budgeting before, you're in the right place. I was under this situation many years ago when we actually had £24,000 worth of consumer debt. The only way we managed to get out of that debt was having a plan of attack, having a budget in place. We'd never budgeted before. We needed to have that budget to know how much money we could actually put towards the debt and get out of that situation. Very much like now when it felt at breaking point and we had no other choice. We needed to change our habits. So if you're looking for something to help you build a budget, you're in the right place. I have my autopilot money spreadsheet system, a collection of spreadsheets that basically allow you to budget, work out how you're going to pay off debt, financial freedom, even create sinking funds, everything on that spreadsheet. I use it with my own family for years and years, something I developed. A lot of people love it. We've had over 600 people buy that spreadsheet in the past year. So if you fancy checking out, if you're wanting to start budgeting, especially right now, why not check it out, invest in your future, and hopefully that could help you. If you don't want to have an electronic version, just get a bit of paper and work out the numbers. I can't stress this enough. We really need to look at what is the immediate amount of money we need to function. Now, off the back of that is my next step. You know how much you need to function. We're reducing, we're getting tighter with those budgets that simply aren't important when money might be scarce or when we might need to change up things. You then need to save the difference right now. That means I want to see building up of emergency funds, or as I call them, new opportunity funds. So right now, having some level of immediate cash works in twofold. I'm not suggesting that we're going to need that cash for anything in the economy. What I'm doing is protecting you for your future and your safety. We should naturally be working on an emergency or a new opportunities fund as standard. These are good money habits. We've got bare bones budgeting. We're also saving regularly. And probably if you haven't been doing it in the past, I know that is leading to a lot of pain and stress right now for people, but this is the reason that we do this habit in the background. So if right now you have that bare bones budget and you're able to even scrimp and save a little bit, you want to be building up an emergency fund in some way. Now that is usually one to three months, if not up to six months of living expenses. It's that bare bones budget. How much do you need per month times by three or six is the maximum in immediate cash. That means it's not locked away in an investment ISA or bonds or savings accounts. The only way to get it is in your saving account with the bank, immediate 
immediate access or perhaps a cash ISA that's immediate access. Now don't be put off here. I'm not saying try and fill that emergency fund as quickly as possible. What I am saying is we're going to try and drive that habit even though money might be tighter. If you can have that reservoir of money, the reason is you won't need to then rely on more credit or loans or just get deeper in a financial struggle once we come out of this. We really want to have cash at hand. Cash is king. It means that you're not debted to anyone else. So if we can build up that fund while we're living a pretty much different lifestyle for a short amount of time, that will all work in our favour. And that's a habit then that you can benefit from. If anything should change six months, a year down the line, just in your private circumstances, you know you've built the habit of actually having an emergency fund. The next good, the next good solid habit to reaffirm for you is think about using your money more consciously. So think about having meal plans every single week. If you know that you're all in the house or you're on your own, you know you've got to eat, you can actually plan that down to the finer details to know how much money actually you need to spend on your food budget. So I usually at the start of the week, I'll sit down and I'll plan out all our dinners. I'll do breakfast, lunch, snacks, everything. And that way I can also use up my fridge and freezer as well. I'm maximizing what we already have in the house, topping up purely on what we need, maybe milk, bread, fresh fruit and veg, just to see us through the week. And you just keep doing that. Treating your money as something that is a resource that you need to look after is especially important at this time. So I like to call it as part of my prep Sunday. And that's what I'm really gonna encourage through this time ahead. Put these good planning habits that you know you should be doing anyway, but we're gonna be even more attentive with it. We're gonna be more mindful, more resourceful. We're gonna be more conscious with our spending and our time and our efforts, because we know that's how we're going to get through this. That is how our parents, our grandparents have got through many circumstances just like this, even worse perhaps in those cases. But we know it's time to pull out all the bag, do the habits that we know, and we know that that will reward us in the end. So I'm also doing what I call a prep Sunday. So if you've caught me on my Instagram, once a week, our house preps for the week ahead. And it's gonna have a little different spin now, I think for short term, but we're actually gonna do that meal planning session. And I'm also going to plan our time. Now, because we're not gonna be able to go out as a family, this is something that you can actually do with your family as well. Plan in activities where you perhaps would have spent money going somewhere or doing something on your own or with your family. Plan activities to look forward to as well. Now, they probably won't cost you any money if you're stuck in the house or in your garden or something like that, but you can actually have still good things to look forward to. A way to maximize your money, being mindful of what you're spending, but also use your time effectively. Make it fun, make it enjoyable. Now, what has been upsetting me, and I know a lot of people, is this hoarding mentality that we're seeing in the UK right now. And that comes from the mindset that there's lack, scarcity. I need to keep everything for myself because if I don't, nobody else will look after me. I need to make sure I've got more than my supply. And what I really wish was happening was that instead of hoarding, people were actually using that extra money to build up their emergency funds or their immediate cash. There's a lot of money being piled into the economy, piled into shops, just because we do not know what will happen, fear mentality. If that money instead was kept in our budgets, fired over to immediate savings, you're building a better tomorrow and months ahead that we can't see, rather than dealing with today only and thinking of what we need right now or the possible risk of it. And that's something that I'm really gonna encourage you. Please don't try and get into that normal thinking of fear and risk on livelihood. It's the cycle of actually demanding more, wanting more than your fair share that then causes this lack. So you're just in that endless cycle, very much like the stock market. When people want out, they see somebody else doing it, think that they're missing out, I'll do it. And you just create the shortage. You don't actually drive the true nature of what would happen. The next thing I would suggest for a lot of people right now, particularly with the government announcements over the past week, is make sure you're keeping up to date with what you're entitled to in terms of benefits or perhaps working tax credits and things like that. Obviously the system changes quite regularly. They're wanting to make sure that a lot of families are stable, have the support they need, particularly small businesses and self-employed people. So at this time, really check that you're not missing out on potential uplift on your income. It's all about keeping your four walls, but are you missing out potentially on tax credits or benefits in any way? Just do that check. You might even add a bit more income to your pocket that especially is needed right now. Now, right now especially, I'm going to double down on side hustles and really trying to inspire you about extra incomes. Something I preach a lot on this channel, you know, having one income, one income source,
hours in your life, whether that be your day job or what you do as self-employed, is not the best strategy moving forward. It doesn't give you the security you need, particularly when the economy could be fragile for the next time ahead. If we start today thinking about additional ways to bring money into a household, the more security you naturally have. So right now, because we're home-based a lot of the time, you don't have a commute, you might even be looking after kids during the day, but you perhaps want to dedicate an hour or two every night to work towards this. Why not really invest in your future and security with money? I'm really going to strongly say if there's never been a time to think about a side hustle, starting a business to bring in a little bit extra cash that you're in control of, now would be the time. Tons of videos on my channel about doing just that. I put up one recently about how to make £100 a day through websites, through different business ideas. You don't need to have big complicated degrees to actually have a business. You have talents and services I know somebody would like, whether that be using Fiverr.com, people per hour, or simply deciding that you're going to be a virtual assistant and do a little bit of admin for somebody. Lots of businesses are still thriving and going to succeed. If so, the ones that will succeed will be using right now to really maximise their business and their potential. So take that on board. What could you offer somebody? Bring some cash into your pocket. Even making 10 to 15 pounds an hour is totally possible right now. We have the internet, you've got your phone, you can do a lot of business stuff for other people, add value to their life. I know that you could really bring an extra income into your life especially. Think about could you write books? Is there a talent or profession that you're in? Could you write courses? Could you even do something like products like I do, digital products on Etsy or eBay? Could you even see sell your stuff that you're maybe not wanting in your home. Think outside the box. Great little challenge for you. Why not tonight take an hour, write down 25 business ideas that you think you could do and circle one or two that you're going to try this week. It's all about momentum. Same with the stock market. It's all about one step every day. You might not have an income from it right now, but that does not mean with two or three months consistent effort that you wouldn't start to see an income and then it just explodes, right depending on what profession that you choose to do as a side hustle. So really take the time, make this serious part of your life. Can you start investing? Can you make a side income? Can you develop any products or ebooks or just offer your talents? Now is the time, especially. Let's prepare for whatever comes down the line in future so we're never in the same situation again. Now, if you want even more ways to make money traditionally, think about using your phone especially. If you're going to be on online, maximize those cashback sites, top cashback. Quidco, if you're doing shopping anyway, you need a food shop, you might need to get some clothes or different items from Amazon. Can you use Top Cashback or Quidco to get more money back in your pocket? That could actually be a good sum of money very quickly. Have you got home insurance that's due up? Cat, dog insurance, even your cars. Think about ways that you could bring more money back in your pocket through your normal spending in this month's ahead. Also think about, is there ways that you could use your phone to actually make some money? So there's very much different sites you can do survey sites, you can even do little jobs, you can even do little activities on your phone and get small amounts of money in exchange for those jobs. Think about ways that you can actually really bring income to your life. And I've got a video all about those apps that can make you money, so I'll leave it down below in the description. Go and check it out if you're looking for inspiration. Now with those extra side hustles, I'm just going to put a suggestion out there. If you're able to balance your books comfortably right now, you're maybe not as tight with money as some, and you have consumer debt, really perhaps consider using those side hustles to pay off that debt. The reason being, let's say we get out of this, we're going to be absolutely fine, but in a year or two years time, perhaps when something of this nature could happen again, that means more of your money is staying in your pocket. You're not having to pay out debt. The faster we get rid of high consumer debt in particular, the more choice we have in our life, particularly with our money. If the amount of money that you know you're obligated to pay out is as low as possible, therefore you need less money to actually function and live, less risk of actually losing your home or anything like that. So if you have consumer debt, you're feeling comfortable with the money coming in, there's no risk there, why not double down on your efforts to get rid of that debt whilst also building up your emergency fund? I'll also touch upon my favourite, which is investing. So right now, and I've made a couple of videos about the stock market right now, I'm still investing in the stock market. The prices of a lot of traditional index funds have dropped dramatically. A lot of companies' prices have dropped, but that's because people are trying to get out of the market. They're fear-based. They're getting frightened of what's ahead. That effectively means the prices are far cheaper than they were even a couple of months ago when you perhaps bought funds already. I'm really thinking about, can I invest more? Because we're good, we're sorted. We don't have any debts 
I've only got the mortgage, I really want to focus on can I invest so I can make the most of that as well. But it's with a balance, I'm making sure I'm keeping cash available, budgeting well, and then I can also consider investing. And here again, I'll emphasize, if you are wanting to invest, please do try and keep the blend about 95% in index funds or something that is absolutely globally diversified for you. Do not stick to only individual companies as part of your strategy. The reason being, and why I only limit that to about 5%, on my total investment portfolio is right now there's a lot of companies not sure what the next couple of months will bring for them that even is at some large companies I've been in for years and years so for me I'd rather only commit to a small amount of my investment portfolio with that potential risk factor if that company goes down I lose my stocks I lose my shares whereas with index funds that's tracking entire markets of thousands upon thousands of companies if those companies all went down well that would be all the companies and I don't see that possible you know the world wants to thrive, wants to survive. And lastly, at this time, I really want to emphasize what I said at the start. Please treat your mindset and your health as your utmost priority right now. I know that financial worries and stress really can affect the mindset. It's something that engulfs you, you think about it constantly, but this is very short term. All that requires is looking at this a different way. We can turn it around. We're incredibly resourceful. For me, and something I would really encourage you to do is treat your mind as your best asset right now invest in yourself not only with your money but with your time I'm really doubling down on all the good stuff I can put in my mind I'm exercising I'm also making sure I've got audible on my phone listening to some great personal development books everything to do with podcasts and everything I'm choosing is about working on my personal development so I've got the tools I've got the strategies in my mind that I can absolutely execute on it's all about actions that we do in life it's no good thinking about how we're going to solve it what is the action we're going to take and especially right now fill your mind with good actionable advice don't just take it in make it happen take one small step every day towards your future whether that be a change in mindset you're going to develop a new business you're going to start investing you're going to just be smarter with your money whatever you decide to do pick one thing each day and make it a reality use this extra time effectively we've got on our hands although through a difficult situation use it wisely you don't have to commute anymore in a lot of cases you might even be with your family for a lot more hours than you would like to have planned but use some of that time in the evening or in the morning to actually fill your mind with good things I'd really say to you as well be mindful about how you're using social media and the news at this time simple things like that we could get in the habit of over consuming they don't do a great thing for your brain particularly in times when we might feel stressed or over tested limit those but encourage yourself to get the good knowledge that really take you far this could be the perfect opportunity to learn a new skill learn a new language what can you do with your time maybe half an hour an hour of your day take that back just for you and whatever your future lies ahead thank you so much for watching today I hope today has really helped you I wanted to give you the best advice possible for dealing with right now and how we can get through this I always promise to give you real practical advice about your money but also remember I say this with success mindset I believe we can achieve anything we want I do always believe everything recovers we're here for the long haul we're completely resourceful thanks so much for watching today I hope you've enjoyed this video, particularly with some actions that you can do right now to set yourself up. As we deal with whatever the next couple of months lie ahead in the UK, I know we can get through it. We're incredibly resourceful and that's what you're going to get on this channel. It's always about success mindset with using money as a tool to design life. Whatever we face, I know we'll get through it and you've got me and my videos to help you through it in this case as well. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, why not give it a thumbs up and why not hit the subscribe button so you never miss any of my videos. I've got a huge number of videos over 200 in fact in this channel go and check them out fill your time with something good and you'll see my face as well so thank you so much for watching i'll see you very soon